Barack Obama gets his proof back. Barack Obama is hanging as loose, has the pinky and thumb salute of his native Hawaii. With his White House on a roll, and his place in history solidifying, by the day after a series of important policy victories, he's letting Americans see more of the man within. He's lit the White House in the rainbow colors of the gay rights movement, dropped the N word to discuss race, crooned the Davy Crockett theme to a man with that name, and held forth on the recipe for guacamole. On Thursday in Wisconsin, Obama was riding the wave of last week's wins on health care, same-sex marriage and trade, trying out a new stump speech that seemed like a victory lap, and comparing the bloated GOP primary field to an actual Hunger Games. The last seven years, shoot the last seven days, should remind us there is nothing America cannot do, there is nothing we can't solve Obama roared, looking more like the change agent of 2008 than the hangdog president, weighed down by the cares of office that he's been for much of the time since. Suddenly as the finish line begins to loom in a crisis-packed presidency with unemployment at its lowest level for seven years and with progressive change once more on the march, it's fun being Barack Obama again. For many in the White House, this moment of presidential poise peaked when Obama exposed his soul more than ever before with his now iconic rendition of Amazing Grace at a funeral for Charleston massacre victims. You could tell he was thinking about whether to do this or not. Ben Rhodes, one of Obama's closest aides, said at the Aspen Ideas Festival this week, and when he did, you just felt this surge of emotion in the room. The weight of history coming out all at once in a way that you don't ever see. For us, it was, you know, that was the person we know that we see every day and wish the rest of the world could see, said Rhodes, a deputy national security advisor. Obama's buoyant mood contrasts with the tone of much of his presidency when he often adopted a cool and anchored persona appropriate to times in which many Americans were suffering economically and U.S. troops faced protracted combat abroad and when he himself seemed to suffer setbacks and frustrations.